Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and our first ever horror movie night. Tonight, I will be reviewing Texas Chainsaw Massacre, released in 2022. Texas Chainsaw Massacre stars Elsie Fisher, Sarah Yarkin, Mark Burnham, Mo Dunford, Olwyn Bowery, Jessica Elaine, Jacob Lattimore, Nell Hudson, Alice Craig, William Hope, and John Larroquette. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was directed by David Blue Garcia. Now, I'm going to be honest. Um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies that I've reviewed so far, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, no other face, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, are the three films that I consider canon in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't put anything into considering um, The Next Generation, the fourth film in this series, a canon entry. I don't consider... Texas Chainsaw 3D as canon and I don't consider 2017's Leatherface canon and I don't consider the remake and its prequel canon either they're their own film series and I have no issues with those two films I mean um I'll still watch both of those. I don't have an issue with either one of those films. Um, now, whenever they announced this film was coming out, I was worried. Especially um, when the trailer showed uh, Olwyn Fowry's Sally Hardesty. And, it may, you know, she looks like it's just doing the whole Halloween 2018 shit of uh, mocking um, the stupid Laurie Strode bullshit that that film did. Um, which I was like, oh God, don't do that. Um, and then of course in that same trailer you had that stupid scene with the uh, idiots with their with their uh, phones and everything. <laughs> what are you doing? Try anything you cancel, bro. You know, I'm not. Uh, a new age Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. Um, but I still went into the movie, same way I did with uh, Halloween 2018, with an open mind. Because I don't believe in going into a film, watching it without giving it a chance. So, you know, I have started watching the film and then the opening had uh, John Larroquette as the narrator again and I was thoroughly impressed with that opening and it was really cool because it really felt like, I mean, his, John Larroquette's narration is, sounds like it would be perfect for a host of a um, crime show like this was that they were showing on the screen. Sally Hardesty, who after telling her story to the police, never again spoke of the horrors she saw that day. I thought that was a great little intro. It, you know, of course we're introduced in that, in that sequence, we're introduced to Elsie Fisher's Lila, and there's nothing about Lila that uh, made me not like her. I mean, she, she seemed likable enough. And then Sarah Yarkin's uh, melody comes into the uh, scenes. And uh, something about her just screamed, I did not like her. And that was cemented in the scene later when Mo Dunford's Richter pulls up in his truck. Look at this guy. Who has such a small dick they need to walk around in public with a fucking gun? Like... I mean, is he compensating for something? I'm just, I mean... Come on, 
Melody, don't. I'm just saying. Like... Now this is this guy's town. This is his. He lives here in Texas, and you're coming into his home and making stupid cracks like that. So I could not stand Melody. And her idiot uh, um, partner in this stupid endeavor that they are doing, going into uh, this town um, in Texas here, taking the whole place over um, and everything with uh, Jacob Lattimore's Dante. Um, I really couldn't stand him either. I mean, he was just a useless character. He is a shit person posing as a great man who's wanting to put together this town that will have no violence. There will be no uh, drugs, no all this, no all this bullshit. And let me tell you something. I don't give a shit. What kind of people you bring into your little community that you created, that you want to make um, out to be this non-violent community, non-drug related community, all that bullshit. Because I guarantee you, you're not going to keep violence out. People are strange things. People may, on the outside, be the perfect person. You've seen it all the time. Man has perfect family, has a beautiful wife, beautiful kids, comes home one day, set with his work, and just kills every one of them, and then kills himself. That is the world we live in. That is reality. These people are not living in reality. They're trying to build a community that is based on bullshit. And I love Richter's line to them. So you guys are what, like a cult? We're the idealistic individuals who want to build a better world. Yeah, that's a cult. <laughs> Richter came off as a really good character. I really liked him. Um... And then we are introduced to Alice Craig as Virginia, and of course, Mark Burnham's Leatherface. And this is a really good version of Leatherface um, that we've never seen before because he is content. He has given up being subservient to any of his family members, and he's just living a quiet, normal life. And then Melody and this dipshit Dante come in and just tell them, yeah, you got to get out of here. Uh, we own this place now. Even though the woman, she tells them, no, that's not possible. I, I own this place. Virginia tells them, you know, I have a deed upstairs. You know, that says I still own this place. I, 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 I didn't sell out. Instead of just trusting her and going, well, something must be wrong here. I'm, I'm, he calls her a liar. He flat out just calls her a liar and then tries to have her kicked out of the house. Which causes her to have a heart attack. And then she dies on the way um, to uh, a hospital, which causes uh, Leatherface to go off. Everything that Leatherface does in this movie, it was brought on by these idiots coming into his town trying to make a Nonviolent community. Fuck you. Your nonviolent community caused this woman to die and caused Leatherface to kill every one of you motherfuckers. So fuck you. 
So, <laughs> you would think with all that that I hate this movie, but no, um, I, other than hating, you know, like I said, I, I, I like Mo Dunford's Richter. I hated to see him die in the manner that he did, but he gave uh, Leatherface a pretty good little fight there. Um, before going down in a kick, and he got a kick ass death scene. He really did. And I didn't have a problem with Lila, and I didn't have a problem with Dante's girlfriend, um, Ruth, played by, um, Nell Hudson. She, she was fairly likable. Um, as is, um, Jessica Lane's. Uh, Catherine, the investor for that. She doesn't seem like she's bad. She just seems like she has, you know, came in, uh, funded this, you know, thinking that, you know, Dante is doing the right thing, what he's doing here. Um, but he's not. Um, and she never does anything where she comes off like Dante does as just a complete horse's ass and a complete bitch. You know, she she uh, seems okay, which um, I really don't think she deserved uh, the fate she got in this film. <laughs> yeah, um, cut in half like that. That was a hell of a way to go. And then we're introduced to the worst part of this film, which is, in my opinion which is Owen Fury as Sally Hardesty. Um, I don't see the reason why they did that. Same reason why before she came in that they had the scene where uh, Mark Burnham's uh, Leatherface ends up bashing down a wall to reveal that he's had his chainsaw hidden behind that wall all this time. And it's like, Why is this movie uh, taking a scene from Rob Zombie's Halloween and throwing it in, in this film and then taking mo a moment like from uh, Halloween 2018 and, and throwing that in there with this grizzled and tough Sally Hardesty coming after uh, Leatherface for revenge. It's like... <laughs> It wasn't necessary, and it didn't help the story at all. But overall, I will say this. <clears throat> I accept this film as, in my own canon, the fourth chapter of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Following the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, and Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I think this film works really well as a direct follow-up to those three films. Um, because Leatherface is on his own. He has no family around him. So, it, you know, it, it's believable that um, even though the little TV broadcast that they showed with John Larroquette doesn't mention a lot of this stuff, how were they to know that he just disappeared? A lot of them crimes that he might have committed later, you know, they, uh, they, they weren't attributed to him. They were just other crimes. They might have been credited to someone else, you know. So um, I think it works for the family to have left their home and went to the amusement park that they took over as their basically base of operations that they were running from until um, Lefty, you know, and Stretch caused the place to go. Um, Otherface escaped that and ended up going to a couple of more of his family members. And Tex, Tinker, Mama, and uh, the uh, little girl. So, um... And then after they got killed at the end by uh, Benny. So I think it works that after Tex and uh, 
banker and mama and the little girl got killed there, that he went into this town, um, had no other family to go to, and went to his old uh, uh, school teacher from way back. And she brought him in, and, you know, the school is no longer... Um, available, but she takes him in because apparently she really liked him and everything. So I think this really works as the direct sequel to those. And uh, Fede Alvarez uh, even said, you know, that it doesn't ignore the other films, you know. Um, but I'm sure he's not talking about four. And I'm sure he's Definitely ignoring that motherfucker. Um, <laughs> but, so, you know, my review of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, I will give this film a 7.0 out of 10. It is not bad film. It's not the best in the series, but it is one that I consider as part of a four film series. I consider it the real fourth film in this series. Um, so, what did you think of this film? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Well, let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, if you like this review, do not forget to like, share, subscribe. This really does help this channel out a lot. But anyway, that's it for this review. And I hope you will join me for tomorrow's Dark Knight Films Night, in which I will be doing a special actor spotlight. Thanks for watching.